Hello, Danny Bly of the final part of Windstroke in Traditional Chinese Medicine, and this is looking at treatment. Remember, this is for acupuncture students only. Please pause and read. We need to consider what pathogenic factors or what deficiencies led to the stroke. Uh, we need to consider how full or empty is the patient, which will dictate how much treatment we can do and what needle technique we use. And remember that stroke patients quite often find treatment quite tiring, so you have to be gentle with this. Consider how can you reduce the likelihood of a further stroke? Um, it's to some degree going to involve treatment, it might be constitutional treatment or reducing stress, and also lifestyle advice is going to be really important here, and understanding which pathogens led to the stroke is really important. Finally, we want to, um, based on this information, make some sort of judgment on how we balance treating the channels with treating more constitutionally. So essentially the balance is going to be between treating the elements, supporting the constitution, tonifying the deficiency, treating the channels, clearing the Jing and the low channels and moving Qi and blood locally or expelling pathogenic factors locally, and then working more systemically to subdue yang, expel wind, clear any pathogens that are built up. Local points will be important. They can stimulate the flow of qi and blood, which might be strengthening or might be clearing. They can unblock the channels and they can clear pathogenic factors from the channels. We especially use the yang ming channels. These in the classics are said to be the most full of qi and blood. So you can see large intestine points and stomach points are really important. We also want to balance the yang points with some yin points as well so that we're creating balance and you may need to consider treating the good side as well as treating the affected side. So I've listed the most important points that are used here but this is really a case of palpating, observing, looking, asking and working out where the blockage in the channel is and clearing it out. But these are the ones that are most commonly used. We can also treat some really important points depending on which part of the body is involved. So do, do channel points, swato jaji points in the upper body, and for the lower body, bladder 32, do three, and the other local do points, and the lower huato jaji points can be really important. Depending on which part of the body is affected, we might focus our treatment. So these are some points that you might use for very stiff fingers, for example. We might also want to treat a, a more local problem. So for example, for ankle inversion, there are some good local points that we use. For ankle eversion, again, some good local points that we use. And we might need to think about balancing the muscles, the ankle inverters and everters, and treating in a more channel way. And also we might want to look at the hips and see how they're affected. Yeah, in a similar way for foot droops, stomach 41, 36, score by 40 are really important points. And we might want to look at important muscles like tibialis anterior, extensor lucis longus, extensor digitorum longus, and their opposite parts in the muscles. Obviously, this is something that you can only get from doing hands-on work. For numbness, hair needling, so very superficial needling around the area of numbness can be really important. For facial paralysis, we first of all want to choose some appropriate distal points. So clearing wind, large intestine 4, lung 7, triple burner 5, gallbladder 20. Triple burner 17 is a really important local point that I nearly always use. And then you can do thread needling. Now obviously you need to be properly trained and competent in this style of needling, but you're essentially trying to superficially needle from one acupuncture point to the other. Now to know which points to do, you need to palpate and you need to observe. So ask the patient to close their eyes, to blow as if they're blowing up a balloon, to smile and to attempt to whistle. And you can get a good idea of which channels are involved. And then palpate. You have to use your hands and you have to learn your hands-on skills before you can do this sort of treatment. So learning practical skills. If you haven't got those, you shouldn't be doing this style of treatment. So we might be thread needling triple burner 23 towards Yu Yao, Yu Yao towards triple burner 23, Yu Yao towards bladder 2, bladder 2 towards Yu Yao. So we might be clearing out this area. We can see the same thing with stomach 7 to stomach 6 or from stomach 6 to stomach 4. We see the same thing from stomach 2 to 3 to 4, trying to clear out this channel. 
we might be needling from gallbladder 14 downwards towards you yao small intestine 18 towards large intestine 20 ren 24 towards stomach 4 stomach 4 towards ren 24 and finally do 26 to large intestine 19 and this is going to be treatment based on what you see and what you palpate ren 23 is a really important point for for dysphasia or aphasia often with heart 5 and kidney 6 and some local treatment and here you can see not only REN23 but two additional points either side of it have been put in to help and again you should only be doing this sort of treatment um, if your anatomy is good you're only ever needling if you know what you're needling into. Alongside treating the channels we need to treat the pathogens if they're still showing fullness so points for wind, points for resolving damp and phlegm. I'm not going to go through these, but you can pause if you want to look at them. Points for clearing fire from the heart and the liver and points for invigorating the blood more systemically, as well as using techniques like gua sha and moving cupping. And of course, we'll be treating the deficiency. So nourishing kidney yin, subduing yang, uh, nourishing the blood and tonifying the spleen chi with the usual points that we'd be expecting to do that with tonify um, apart from subduing liver yang where we're doing even technique so to round up um, channel stroke uh, better prognosis more superficial organ stroke where there's been unconsciousness prognosis is it's more difficult to treat you always want to consider cf for the deepest level of treatment and any blocks to treatment. The earlier you can treat two weeks after um, the actual stroke itself, dearly before three months you get the best results um, and after 12 months harder to get results but still worth treating. You can sometimes really help. You want to be thinking about 10 to 12 regular treatments before you see a difference and assess the results. So this isn't something that you sometimes you see quick results especially if you're working on muscle channels but you want to be thinking about 10 to 12 treatments and then review. You want to consider um, trying to prevent any further stroke. Remember, this is a high likelihood, both treatment and lifestyle advice to try and prevent any more strokes or TIAs. Um, you want to treat the sequela, so treat the, the channel problems. And you may be just treating patients who have had a stroke many years ago for other things. So. This might be something to do with understanding the pathology of the patient, but you may not be directly treating it. Thanks for listening.